Kemet is an amazing game requiring lots of strategy, tactics, and boldness. One of the keys to winning at this game is to understand the different pyramids and how they can assist you in your victory. We'll take a look at the white powers and more here today on Legendary Tactics. In the course of doing my research for this video, I found the article written by Brian Hank of Pull the Pin Games to be especially useful, and I wanted to give him credit here. Kemet is an amazingly balanced game, with many paths to victory. The tech tree, for lack of a better term, will be the main way that players differentiate themselves from each other, and allows them to create a unique faction profile each and every game. During play, you may only partially get to decide what path you will take, as you will likely end up choosing the tiles of a color that has not been taken by your opponents. Choosing to focus on a less popular color ensures you the greatest selection of upgrades. Today we'll focus on the powers granted by the White Pyramid, which is likely to be the path least chosen by your opponents. Overall, the white powers are best used as a method to support your main strategy. If one focuses too much on white, it's likely going to generate more prayer points than can be comfortably used, and not enough help in battle. But let's take a look at the tiles in more detail. First, the level 1 tiles, of which there are two, the Priest and the Priestess. The Priest gives you an extra prayer point when you take the prayer action, and the Priestess gives you a 1 prayer point discount when you choose to buy a power tile. Here, the Priestess is definitely better, and should be your first purchase. The Priest only really helps players to take the prey action somewhat less often, and still takes an action to activate. The Priestess, on the other hand, helps players to get off to a faster start in the early game by saving prayer points at a time in the game when they are harder to come by. And it also saves actions, as it is a passive benefit requiring no action to utilize. So the Priestess will be your first buy, and the Priest will be a backup if the Priestess is all sold out. At level 2 there is a decent variety. Slaves allow players to take a 1 prayer point discount when using the Raising Pyramid action. It's a nice passive ability, as players will need to be raising the levels of their pyramids anyway. Since most games last about 7 to 8 turns, getting this power right away should typically save you about 5 prayer, but could be as much as 9 if you maximize your pyramid development. It's not the best tile among all the tiles that provide economy, but it isn't bad. The High Priest passively provides two prayer to its owner during the night phase of each turn, which can add up to a fair bit over the course of a game. It needs to be purchased early to make it worthwhile, as it could provide a slow drip of prayer points that adds up to 12 to 16 points per game, which is not bad at all. Crusade, which gives a player prayer points for each enemy you kill, can help aggressive play, as activating it keeps prayer coming in consistently to replace troops lost in battle. It can also be useful in attacking high damage players. And Divine Boon, which provides an extra Divine Intervention card at night, can be great in providing a player with plenty of Divine Intervention cards, which is generally a good thing as they can help to turn the tide in battle and work with any strategy. The only downside is that you never know what DI card you're going to get, so one's mileage will vary. It can feed another great red tile, Divine Wound, which requires Divine Intervention cards to function, so be sure to get these tiles working in combination. At level 3, the tiles you can access are a mixed bag. Hand of God is the most interesting one. By raising a pyramid by one level for free every night, it can save not only a lot of prayer but action points too. It is best purchased early to wring the maximum effect out of it. Some say it is the best white power tile in the game, and perfect for economy-based strategies. Vision, which allows you to draw 5 DI cards and keep the one you want, is handy to make sure that your Divine Intervention cards are useful to your strategy. It is at its most playable with the Mummy or Divine Boon. It is quite expensive for what it is though, so make sure it will be clearly useful to you before purchasing. By giving you 4 prayer points for every offensive and defensive win in battle, Holy War will effectively solve any prayer point issues a player may have, but it is likely to be redundant by the time you get access to it. If you are picking on some weak players and winning 3 battles in a turn, this can give you an insane amount of economy. But if you are winning 3 battles a turn, you're already doing pretty well, so this tile may not be necessary. It will usually be one to avoid unless you really need it. And the last level 3 white tile is a victory point. This is just like the others except that it is more likely to be available for the taking. In most games, players just don't get around to upgrading their white pyramid to level 3 and thus never get access to it. Finally, the level 4 power tiles. 
Priests of Ra gives you a discount so that whenever you spend a prayer point, the cost is reduced by one. This is better than Holy War, but on the surface, not as good as Priest of Amon in ending any issues you may have with prayer points. It can be super powerful with some strategies. You want to play this one together with Act of God. Speaking of which, Act of God with its additional silver token is expensive but worth it. It is the biggest edge you will get with this playstyle. The Priest of Amon tile gives a player 5 prayer points at night, which is useful, but how many points will be wasted when you repeatedly hit the maximum point spot on the prayer track? And you need to get this really early to get the full benefit. The Priests of Ra may be better as it spreads things out and minimizes waste. And then we have the Mummy, the only white creature in the game. The Mummy is, as one might expect, slow moving but powerful. The extra Divine Intervention cards are useful, as are the boost to troop strength. Pick up the mummy as soon as you can if following a white strategy. So what is the optimal build order for players choosing to focus on this path? The basic plan is to race up the white tech tree and branch off to blue or red soon after that. Start the game with a level 2 white pyramid and choose one support color of either red or blue that you will also focus on, placing that pyramid at level 1. We will look here at using red as the support color. In turn 1, Priestess is first unless they are gone already, in which case Priest will have to do. Follow this with Charge if going red or upgrade your red pyramid. Turn 2, pick up Godspeed to give the soon to be acquired mummy decent movement and upgrade your pyramid to acquire Hand of God. In turn 3, Hand of God raises your white pyramid to level 4 so you can then purchase the mummy. In turn 4, grab the Priest of Ra, and then, after the Hand of God raises the Red Pyramid to level 3, pick up the Blades of Neath. Turn 5, Divine Wound and Holy War. Turn 6, get the Giant Scorpion if it is still available. Turn 7, pick up Act of God and Initiative. And in turn 8, the White Victory Point for the win. We hope this little video guide helps you to use the White Pyramid as your path to many victories in the board game Kemet. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button down below or even consider becoming a member of our channel. This is Legendary Tactics.